He used to sit in the back of the bar and he would tell the bartender if the cadets coming over from the Citadel if they were old enough to drink or not. One night two guys came in, they were not old enough to drink. John had the bartender throw them out. They left pretty ticked off and came back the next night and tried to steal the cash register from the front of the bar. John saw what was going on from the back, he slammed down his beer, and he goes up front and just starts pounding on these guys, beating the hell out of them. A couple of gunshots go off. John got grazed in the neck, but the bullet goes behind him into the wall. He's the only one that got shot, but he's the only one that got up. Goes back to the bar, tells the bartender, get me another beer, go get those two guys in ambulance. Irony of the story. If I tell you that a building is haunted, you're already preconditioned to think that some tragic death occurred here. That's not the case with this location. It's a bullet hole. It's allegedly still here. So, I do say that a lot. Um, so I say allegedly because I don't go in there often, but even if they filled it in, that means they sealed Big John's blood inside the front of this building. People that sit in the front of the bar tend to get a little queasy, nauseous, or headache. This is why we start here. I'm taking, well, we'll say eight strangers on a paranormal investigation because I already know those two in the back hiding out. Um, now, if any of you guys feel any of those symptoms, like I just mentioned, the nausea, the headache, the dizziness, please let me know. We'll get us out of that area and blame the weather first. So again, I'm not the TV show host where everything's gonna be a ghost. Just kind of keep that in the back of your brains. But again, we will assess it later, but your safety is of the utmost importance. Is that fair to everybody? Especially yes. people here with kids? Got it, figured as much. So let's get your mind off your own health and especially your kids' health that you guys brought with you. So we had a big earthquake here in 1886. If you didn't know that from another tour here in Charleston, now you know. Every tour in town talks about it. But the building of Big John's is allegedly where the first death occurred from that earthquake. By the way, earthquakes are weird for us because you're in South Carolina. We're supposed to have hurricanes, not earthquakes. The white mans who you see in the middle of the building, they say a piece of it broke off, hit somebody in the back of the head and killed them. The previous owner of this bar, in between the two Big John establishments, used to see dark shadows in the middle of East Bay Street after closing. I say allegedly a lot with this story, it's because I have no proof whatsoever. It's just a great segue, so the moms that I get in my tour aren't worried about their kids getting sick, even though I just brought it back up again, so sorry about all of that. Um, so are we ready to learn more about this gear that you guys are now holding? Mm -hmm. I figure as much. Madeline, are you ready? Okay, you sure? <laughs> Alright, we're going to go this way. Like, uh... Talk about your gear. We've got a lot of communication devices that includes our word list, our Ouija board, all the spirit boxes. What's the first question everybody would like to ask a Ouija board when they get in front of one? If you've never seen one or used one, think of a TV show or movie. Everybody here. Yeah, good job. <laughs> so let's say we all sit around and we said, is anybody here? And then Jack hears the answer, no. That means somebody's here. <laughs> they yeah. answered you. Getting my point? Yeah. So we're not going to go after yes, no questions here. We're going to go after some details. For example, if somebody's here, tell me what color a big red barn is. Obviously, we are now looking and listening for the color red, but those of you with listening spirit boxes are using song lyrics and DJ to be able to convey messages back to us. The word red might not be available. Fire truck, blood, heart, those three things are specifically red, and I would take that as possibly being paranormal if something else was going on. Let me give you another example. Madeline's word list just spells out the word art for us, and that doesn't mean anything over here by itself. Um, plus the box. Carly here is the number 40 coming out of her spear box. If you put both of those clues together, Art Fairfox was number 40 on Big John's team. 
especially where this is a collective, like you gotta you know collect some puzzle pieces and kind of see how they all match up. Cool thing for you is I know about 90% of what these puzzles look like. It's the other 10% of things you guys hear and see that I'm like, I have no idea what that is, who that is, or what that means. That means I get to research. I'm actually excited about that. So that's where I get to really dive in because that's what I do. I'm a writer. I love to research. So, cameras. Let's kind of get into those. We have three cameras out here tonight. A um, couple of rules on, on all three cameras. You don't. When we are recording, you want to be as slow as possible in movement. So the reason why, again, I watch them in double time, so it's much easier to find an anomaly in any of the three cameras um, if we're watching it as fast, twice as fast as what it's supposed to go. The other piece, too, is, oh, by the way, if I'm too busy with other people because I have a feeling that some of you are going to keep me on my toes for sure, Jack. Um, and if we enter a space, we hit that record button, keep it running for the entire duration that we're there, um, and then take a break before we leave the space. Um, we don't want to record in between spaces and make them recreate the Blair Witch Project. You guys remember that. Um, so, I know, horrible movie. We don't need to do that over again. Um, so, Blake, you already know the rules of yours, right? Keep one of us in view at all times because we are a key reference. That's why I make that joke at the beginning. Secondly, remember to keep the sky out of view because the blue dot will default to the sky because there's no surface. So, if you can, keep the sky out of view. Nice slow movements. Uh, also, we're going to be in places like this where there's uh, people walking by and cars. We do not film cars. We do not film people besides us. So, uh, even when we're in other areas with other colors, we will be mailing information on purpose. So, I'm not going to be giving you questions like, what color was George Washington's white horse? So, just kind of keep that in mind. You will get the answers from your communication device, whether it be a spirit box, um, all of, obviously the Ouija board, and our word list from Madeline. Hopefully, that one really comes through with us for tonight. I was kind of light last night, I'll be honest. Um, so welcome to the Pinckney Mansion. <coughs> this is where uh, Charles and Eliza Pinckney uh, actually lived. Their mansion sat in the front of the space, facing East Bay Street. Eliza's garden, lined up with Five Creek Restaurant, came all the way across. And we are standing in the servant and slave quarters for the home. So that's the layout of the land. Who the hell were these people? Charles and Eliza had a son named Charles, and they had a nephew named Charles. This is why we look for those secondary clues, folks. That's three different chucks, in case you weren't paying attention. The son and the nephew were signers of the Constitution for South Carolina. Big deal for us. I hate politics more than Jack. So we're going to move on to Eliza. She has a much better history anyway. So especially, um, you guys said, how long have you lived here? Because two and a half years. Two and a half years. So this would be a good lesson for you. So Eliza Lucas, I think me, um, this is where her mansion was. And Eliza marries Charles at a young age according to today's standards. I say it like that because if those of you with spirit boxes and communication devices, if you're going to ask her how old she was when she got married, don't expect numbers from the colonial days from where she came from. Think of today's standards. By the way, ladies in colonial days usually got married between 12 and 14. Not going to be the numbers you're going to be hearing. Think of today's standards because the husband was over double her age when they got married. It was a creepy age gap back then. It's a creepy age gap now. So put that in perspective. But she marries him because her father's over in England. He thinks he's dying. He's trying to bring all of his children home one last time so he can see them. Eliza did not believe that he was dying. So she stayed put and got married. It's 1744. You don't get married in that year to get a green card. We're not a country yet. So she did marry him out of love. This is a true love story, and this is a place of respect. So I'll show you that more as we kind of move through the story. But anyway, she was right. Dad didn't die right away. Instead, he starts sending her gifts from England to where you're standing right now. One of those gifts happens to be the plant seeds of indigo. Those of you that have been in town for just a day or so, you've seen the word indigo somewhere, I promise you. That's a plant that makes blue dye that makes our blue jeans blue. Good job, Carly. You knew that you were coming to see me. You had to have a reference. So, but anyway, that's how we use it now. But, but Eliza didn't know what to do with these seeds when she got them. She had to learn how to make the dye from her servants and slaves after keeping it, trying to keep it cultivated because it's not always warm here. When she did all that, she moved it to a cash crop, got a hold of dad and told him, rice plantation prices are going downhill, but we're going to make a killing with this indigo. And we now have an international businesswoman during colonial times, something absolutely unheard of. So, that's the boring business stuff of Eliza. Let's get into the weird shit, because that's why you guys are all here. So, what's going to happen is I'm going to, I like to keep this environment controlled, so I am going to assign questions to you guys. You can cherry pick off of other people's questions that I hand out. You can either say them out loud, you can focus on them. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Carly was worried about that at the beginning. Um, she didn't want a spirit box because she didn't want to talk to somebody she couldn't see. Um, but at the same time, remember that we have three cameras, my voice recorder, and a number of communication devices. So, Jason might ask a question, and Madeline might get the answer. It could go anywhere. That's how this works. Um, by the way, James, have you gotten any numbers yet? Uh, yeah. What have you got? Two, five. Okay. Three, while we are here or while we are like on the we street? we are walking across the street. Across the street, probably from the parking meters and electrical poles. Okay, got it. 
Um, so again, yours, you're definitely going to shout something out because yours is going to be a lot slower than his. Um, so let's kind of go through this series of questions so that way we can see how this is going to work out. So I'm actually going to start off right to left tonight. So Jason, we're going to start off with yours. You're going to focus on Eliza's death. So she's pretty open about talking about it. So four major questions that we get the answers to, how old she was when she died, what she died from, where she's buried, and which president was a pallbearer at her funeral. So very specific questions that are not yes, no questions. If you ask anything else, just be respectful and make sure it's not a yes, no question. Is that fair? Sure. I figured as much. Um, with yours, you and Jack are gonna have the same set of questions. So um, the mansion's not here anymore. So you guys are gonna be asking what happened to the mansion, and if you get an answer, or if anybody else gets the answer, ask when that happened. We're looking for a specific date. So it might come up in just numbers. If we get the what, we normally get two or three numbers of the when. So just kind of keep that in mind. So Jack, I'm just giving you some basic tools of like how to get this started of what to listen for. Um, next communication device is actually going to work in tandem with what Joanne has going on. So Eliza has a maiden name that starts with the letter L. I said it earlier by mistake. I'm hoping nobody caught up to that. Um, but with that, you are gonna be looking for Eliza's maiden name because she's the second wife named Eliza from Charles back to back. The first wife also had a maiden name that started with the letter L. So hopefully we get either one is here. So you're gonna be looking for her initials, ELP, in that order. And then you're going to be looking for the maiden name, of course. Um, so with this, we do have, I think it looks like three cars in here, grand total, maybe four. Um, we don't go near vehicles at all, especially with the camera. She's going the opposite direction. Um, I'm gonna keep Joanne behind with me so I can show her a little bit more about how to operate this device. And everybody else is gonna spread out. I'm gonna do one to two round robins with everybody. Let's get, have you started recording yet? Uh, okay. no. Absolutely, let's get that thing up and running and uh, let's have some fun. So let's spread out and I'll be with everybody in just a minute. I'm gonna start with Joanne. All right. Jack, listen up, man. You got this. <laughs> I'm so excited for that kid to catch something. All right, so this is a little sensitive. So this red light over here should be on the windows. And when it gets cold, it tends to jump on like this. Um, so for letting us visit your home tonight. How old were you when you died? In what way did you die? Elijah. Eliza. Did you have children? How many children did you have?
Highway 54 close? Huh? Highway 54, is it close? Is it close? I don't know. But is that what you heard? 54? Chevrolet Highway 54. Ah. Madeline, are you getting some words? I got sand experiment coordinate experiment again. Oh. Yeah. Your camera, just so you know, I don't always follow up with, just like the thermals, because yeah. it's small. I send them to YouTube, so okay. you guys can watch them on TV. You okay. can watch them on his tablet or whatever he uses. Sure. Um, but I watch them on the computer. Uh -huh. So if I'm not catching up with you in real time, because I'm focused on communication yeah, devices, sure. I just don't want you, my camera people to think I'm ignoring them. You're just as important as everybody else, but later on. I understand. <laughs> Liza, were you lighting up the sky back there? <clears throat> Oh. And that's spelled out S E E. Joanne? Yeah. How does it 
spelled out C. What? What did it spell out for you so far? S E D. That was all. Why would it be C? They haven't gotten any other like significant type of word or anything that would make any sense. Would make any sense. Someone up there walking to us, and he's just like down here, but he might have sat there. Yeah, I can't might. Tell. I can't tell. Walking here. To the right. On the top floor where like that's huge. Huge, huge. This is big. They have fire up there, but it's warm. Alright. 
I'm actually excited. Like, we got some decent stuff going on in here. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, you're good to go. I'll just make sure you're recording. You can see the Blakey light on your end. Well, um, so, your cameras don't necessarily have to be on me in here, especially with Blake's, uh, just because there's enough foliage in here for temperature patients. Uh, but all of the other cameras. So, Allie with Jordan, I almost told folks to like, just put it at your side. There's a reason why I left the top handle on there and just cut it off. So that way you can just get a full view of the alley. So, if you get a stick man walking towards us while I'm telling the story, super great. We might not catch it in real time, but it might be in your video. So you might want to just grab that top handle and hold it to your side. And that's going to get right away. So why would let him go back there? Oh. <laughs> I just got grub cow. Cow? Grub, R U B Cow. D O W. I thought A. You got cow. I'm excited. Steve? I know, like, I'm not excited about rubbing cows. Um, so <laughs> I'm excited more about the word cow. Let me explain. <laughs> wow, this is super cool. Um, I don't think we've had this on this device yet. Where you're standing used to be called Cow Alley a long time ago. Um, and I normally explain this like at the end of the, the dueling story because that's what I normally cover first. Um, but this is where they kept the livestock in the city of Charleston. That's why it was called Cow Alley. I am stoked only because we haven't had it on there. I know it seems like a silly little three letter word. You wouldn't get the Coast Center that excited. But that's something new that hasn't happened here yet. And normally we'll show it on our word list. So and we've got it on there. And
Dr. Ladd thought she was great and Ralph didn't. The argument turns into Ralph insulting the doctor's fiance, Amanda, back home in Rhode Island, and it got really ugly. They, got, they went their separate ways. He already figured out that Ralph has friends around town, so he goes to the friends at the newspaper and puts an ad in the paper telling the whole city of Charleston what he thinks of the doctor. We got some folks coming our way, so Mike, you might want to lower your camera. Um, so yeah, you can just point yeah, it at the ground. We all completely understand. Um, there you go. Just yeah, come on, Mike. Um, <laughs> <Come on. sighs> wow. So, anyway, so Dr. Ladd saw the ad that, that Ralph placed because it was kind of like, I hear it disgrace the society kind of mentality, but he rebuttaled with, let's go to the Rhode Island. We're going to settle this for Ralph. So they came down, they took it to 10 paces, they turned, the doctor pointed his gun in the air and he stopped. And we're going to let these folks pass. Mm -hmm. What's that, Tom? Yeah, I know. I don't know. I'm not allowed to duel. How are you doing, guys? Good. 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 So, he put that gun in the air and shoots because he didn't want to kill his friend. He just wanted to show up. However, Rock has this one bullet in his gun still, and he puts it in the kneecap on the doctor. Dr. Lai didn't die, but he fell to the ground since he's in pain, obviously. And his friends picked him up, took him home to 59 Church Street, where he died 10 days later after refusing medical treatment. I'm going to point out a couple of things. First off, he died in 1786. Gunshot wounds back then are a lot different than what we think of gunshot wounds now. Secondly, he's a doctor. He probably just thought he had lead poisoning and tried to bleed it out himself, but obviously he failed because he died. Now, like I said, every tour toe should listen for the whistles. We have three cameras running plus my voice recorder. If we're going to get a whistle, we normally get it on that. Luckily, we heard one. Hopefully we have the audio from it. If he wasn't recording, then we're not going to have it. Um, but if we do get a whistle from a song on a spirit box, um, we will normally get the word doctor from a commercial almost immediately after. So it's almost like a doctor. We get it all the time. Coming here for four years, can't tell you how many times it's actually occurred. I don't find it coincidental. The dude's letting us know that he's here. Secondly, if you're going to try this on your own and walk all the way through the alley, I can't take you all the way through this alley. I'll explain in a moment. I've been kicked out of here. So if you're going to try it and use your voice recorders from your phones, just remember that every local knows the story. Anybody walking up and down Cumberland Street or Queen Street, we all throw a whistle down the alley. I used to do it every single morning when I was done with your data because my garage used to be over there and my office is now over here. I'd have to pass the alley at like 3 in the morning and I would always throw a whistle, especially since I got thrown out of here. And Maddie Lynn wants to know why the hell I got thrown out of here because she's giggling and hysterically. Here's how this goes. I already told you that the, this used to be called Cow Alley, but part of that was the, it didn't go all the way through this way. There was a wall up there, so that was to keep all the livestock inside. That means that the bricks on the other side are older than the ones you're standing on. Those bricks down by the Queen Street side are sun-dried bricks from slave children. There used to be uh, there's a full handprint and a fingerprint swipes and other bricks down there, but that full handprint is definitely that of a child. I used to take my groups all the way through this. However, well, you guys were actually after this occurred, so it was actually a year after. Um, so I used to take them through there as a history lesson, not for anything paranormal. Because remember, I'm treating that brick the same way I do a grave. That kid's not there. I'm also trying to you know, move people along, so I'm not being disrespectful to the beautiful mansion at the end of the alley. On November 26, 2020, I finally got caught. My group huddled around waiting for something to happen, and I'm trying to move them, and they didn't go. But the new owner of that mansion came out, and he was screaming. My daughter thought it was hysterical because dad's getting yelled at. <laughs> like, so you get the point. So we moved on. The next day was Thanksgiving. I don't throw on Thanksgiving because I worked for Walmart for over 10 years in upper management, and you all like to fight over towels, and now I'm scarred for life on Thanksgiving. I, so I can see that grin over there. Like, <laughs> yep, I've done it. Um, <laughs> they were nice towels. They were nice Yeah. Um, and I was the guy, like, like the smallest person in the store <laughs> covering them down. Uh, but anyway, so I called my partner the next day, which was November 28th, 2020, and he laughed at me just like, he, you know, my daughter did that night that it actually hurt, and it happened, and he said, you're only allowed to go down halfway. That's cut off point for tours, otherwise it's considered residential. So he's like, reroute your group for tonight, because I'm sold out again, it's Black Friday. I take my group out, I tell them, I don't believe in the next story, because I'm a vampire guy, not a pirate person, we're obviously going to be discussing pirates next, um, but somebody on a spirit box before we left gets the name Anne. I didn't tell them which pirate we're going to be investigating, the famous female pirate, Anne Bonnie. So it's kind of like, all right, maybe we're going to get something. We go up and around the corner, somebody else heard the number 300. I don't know what that one means. I write it down. I do the research for them. We were there on November 28th of 2020, and Bonnie's trial for piracy was November 28th of 1720, the exact 300-year anniversary mm. of her pirate trial. So I went, well, damn it. I was actually kind of ticked off. My problem with pirates, guys, is that 
pirate stories come from pirate lore, which was written a hundred years after the golden age of piracy. That's a problem for the guy with the master's degree in creative writing. I need facts and data, especially when I'm doing this. I've read more damn books on pirates, more documentaries, more video games, as many compilations of these stories I can find to get a different viewpoint on them, the better. Everything we're going to be discussing at the next location came from a minimum of two resources. Just keep that in mind, I am a heavy researcher. Um, so, before we leave the space, have we seen any numbers? Nothing at all? Um, so did you get any others on yours? No. Okay, any words? Because your thing's going like bananas over there. Yeah, I, um, I got the word can, A-N. <coughs> That's actually part of a flintlock gun. I'm going to write that one down. I got a... A. Look at that, when we're talking about duels. You said there's no such thing as jokes. I got a... Why could he love saying throw it? Throw it into it. Now it's his residence. Residence. I'm so excited. I'm actually pretty excited about the word pain as well. So I don't know much about guns, but when weird things come up, I actually have to do that because um, the word pain is like another uh, phrase. Like it's like a pain in something that goes on to a my gun, which is a dual in this one. Hopefully, it might not show up on you. It might not see it. So, Jack, do you have that? How are you focused on that? And you guys are really good, obviously. Um, so, we are going to go up and around and talk about crazy rated R pirates. Are you guys ready for this race? Kyla, are you ready for some pirates? She's not. She's not. Yet. Keep listening. You video came up there. Um, so, let's go up front. As soon as you said it, uh, Liam, I heard Tom. Come on, let's go. Let's do this. It's more like, uh, like Tom is in Yeah, it's so funny. It's always in the context that you hear it. So, because the word pan showed up, let's say the word pan showed up on your screen, but you guys should hear it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Do you have any more Taylor Swift songs? Like that would be with your time. I got me right after you said Taylor Swift. Oh my god. You taped it up with What did it say? They're just here to haunt you. It said behind. Yeah. Behind you. Oh wow, that's a cool building. Oh man, somebody ran over the Grinch. that they heard, because I am going to give you that brief story on that one. Do you guys know the 99 reference that I told you guys about last time? I think you did, but I don't remember. Okay. So, 
every ghost tour stops across the street. I think what the person said, you guys are actually buying people. There's a cemetery right next to it, the graveyard. So inside that side of the graveyard, there's a sign that reads, there's no ghost here but the holy ghost. And there's a reason for it. So don't jerks like me trying to recreate what happened. Here's what happened. Oh, 18, 1888, a young lady passed away by the name of Sue Howard Hardy. Initials being SHH. So, sounds cheesy and candy because it's yeah, but it actually works here because we get it all the time. But anyway, and it's actually showing up on your before too. Um, but at any rate, so she dies six days after her stillborn child. So we've got the 41 years and 99 comes into play. 99 years later, a local photographer was taking pictures of all of our cemeteries putting a book together. And he captures a full apparition in one of his photographs. So, this is off the Kodak because it's 1987 and we don't have the technology that we have to be able to do things like this, right? So Kodak basically confirms the camera that he took the photograph with and that the picture was not altered in any way, shape, or form. So, basically type in best apparitions ever caught. This will normally show up in like a top 100 list. Like it is pretty cool. However, it's cursed, which is why I don't always tell the story unless something pops up about it. I was so crazy. Oh, um, so, pictures, like I said, being cursed. Females that handle it are said to get the same kind of symptoms we talked about at the beginning, the headaches, the nausea, and dizziness. Pregnant females are said to not have a good pregnancy, which is exactly why I don't always show it. I do show you guys this picture, please do not touch my tablet. This is said you're not going to have a good pregnancy. I'm not going to be the guy where you guys had a great vacation, and nine months later, I <laughs> cursed your family. So, I'm going to show you guys a picture by two by two, and then we're going to get into a pirate. Uh, I'm not super excited about anything else besides that 99. Not close to burning to me, I still want that secondary story. Um, I'm just giving you that instance in case I do find something. So, two by two, this is the picture that I took. Here's your apparition. It's a woman at her back praying over her own grave with a baby basket next to her. That's like where all the hills are. So, the woman is praying over her own grave, looking at her back, and there's a baby basket right there. I'm looking at her back like she's freaked out. Oh, okay. You know, like she's wearing a shawl. The baby basket is to her right. But back then, they wouldn't have had like a carriage for your car, right? So we're talking 1888. Okay. Great player. You that looks see. like she's like a veil or something. Exactly. Yeah, Most I thought she was wearing shawl. like a wedding dress. Yeah. So, I don't at know. first. Yeah. At first. <laughs> Alright, so let's get into our crazy pirate tale. Did you hear anything else along the way, by the way? Did yes. you see anything? What did you get? As we come, as we come out of the alley, turning to the left, we got bonnet, hanging, and we got the Bonnet is interesting. Um, Well, that was after. Well, that was after pain, that. though. Mm. The end was the after end pain. Of the pain. It was bonnet, pain, the end. Interesting. So, like the end yeah. of the pain. Yeah, it's kind of a good reference. All right, let's talk about. I got the word nuts. Is that? <laughs> We're all nuts, aren't we? Yeah. Maybe that's it. <laughs> We're all yeah. nuts. Or push, it. Out the cult. push it. Push it. We're going to next week. Like and we cross over here. I got the word seven. He died on November 2nd. Yeah. So it's a damn close place. Baptized. Oh, yeah. it's very, it's very interesting. Why would you be hearing something from something for something about a month ago? That's what I was thinking. Exactly. Where would November come from? Still a very specific date I'm gonna write it down. Uh, <laughs> it's just funny to me guys to read it. I know. Yeah. All right. Other tourists come through here. They talk about that building up there. We are too, but we're going to look at it in a much different light. Those, that's the gunpowder magazine. It's a museum now, so it's a good place to spend five bucks to get out of our heater cold. It's the building up there, Joanne, with the big crosses on it. Yeah. But those are not crosses. For those of you that aren't from here, those are earthquake holes. If you don't know what those are, basically a turnbuckle. Let's put that on the other side. If we get another earthquake, like what I mentioned at the top of our night, you could turn the turnbuckle and it'll tighten the building so it doesn't incur further damage. Hmm. Great idea, just doesn't work. It's kind of dumb. You really think about it. Um, <laughs> go ahead, you got a joke. I want to hear it. I just want to know who's going to die. It's going to go eternal. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a wrench somewhere. 
Some sir, there ain't this label tossing out of it. Um, and by the way, for you chorus here, you've seen these bolts all over town. Um, they're in the shape of lion heads and pineapples, and even the brick apartment building behind it has earthquake bolts on every single floor. So it's just part of our Charleston talk. So the reason I bring up those specifically, the big ones over there that look like crosses, is because that's the first set that Charleston ever put in. The reason being is because that's the oldest government building in South Carolina. It was finished in 1713. We are here because this building was being constructed at the same time that Anne Bonnie was coming here to start her new life. This is what I call a familiar. For those of you that watch the Spanish movies and all of the YouTube videos and the TV shows, you've seen that boo bunny where they have the teddy bear with the blinky light EMF meter in there. They use that because they want a child ghost to recognize it as a toy. Think of that concept with why we're here. We don't have many buildings this old that Anne would actually recognize from her own era. So, let's get into this. The building took 10 years to build. Does that sound like our government? Small building? 10 years? Yeah. Sarah's like, eh. Yeah, it does, you can yeah. say. Um, I had actually piss off an FBI agent one night that was in uh -huh. my group. He's like, can you stop making jokes about the government? I'm like, nope, can't do it. But anyway, the, our history begins right in the middle of the building's construction. Try to follow me on this one. There's a few twists. I'll slow down on the twist, but I like to breeze through the rest of it and it can be lengthy if I don't. In 1708, a young lady moves here from Ireland. Her name is Anne Cormack. She comes here with her father and his mistress. The mistress is Anne's mother. Everybody with me so far? Sarah, you got that? I've seen that head tilt. Like, okay, I got it. So the three of them are <laughs> running away from her father's angry wife. How mad was this wife that she kicked him out of the damn country? So, stand here with the lady. Just stand here with the lady. You got that face? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Well, while well, you were saying that, she got a dope for you. Well, yeah. Well, right too late. So, I might forget something if you keep interrupting. <laughs> 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 I can sing them right now. Um, but anyway, so back to Anne. Um, so, with that said, they're running away and they landed at Lane Georgetown. That's between us and Myrtle Beach, if you're not familiar with the coast. Dad bought a plantation in Georgetown, but Mom died pretty quickly. That means Dad is now sending young Anne down here to Charlestown to sell things from the plantation to keep things afloat, hence the familiar building. So, back home in Ireland, Anne was said to be a badass even back then. They say when she was seven, eight, nine years old, remember this, pirate lore, nothing was going to be exact, they say she killed a... Can't say how many times you tried servant knife and belly, so if one different devices, you have excuses to let know what's happening. Back to Anne. Fast forward, the building's done in 13. By 1760, pirates are starting to come through Charlestown. Anne's pretty happy about this because she's going to fall in love with one of these pirates so she can earn her freedom. Just like a man. It's a man's role at this point. So, the first guy she falls in love with, and I say it that way because there is a good handful of them, and we're going to discuss them all. That's what makes the story so damn good. The first guy is James Bonney, and you already know where this one's going. Dad didn't approve because he's a pirate. They ran away to Jamaica. They got married. And Cormac became Anne Bonney. That's where her pirate name came from. However, when she gets down there, she realizes her new husband is not Captain Jack Sparrow, like what she was hoping for. This guy turns out to be a privateer, which means he's a spy for the British. He's a coward. This isn't who she wanted. She falls in love again. Guy number two. This is John Rackham, but everybody calls him Calico Jack. This is the guy they based your Johnny Depp character off of, in case you were wondering who this guy actually was. Jack has his own ship, he has his own crew. Anne wants to be part of the crew, but Anne, you can't put a female on a pirate ship. Does anybody know why? And keep it family friendly. Can you give your audience. Ah, see the shuffles? You all got dirty brains. Um, it's bad luck. So, <laughs> okay, I was gonna say. Um, but anyway, it is bad luck. Jack makes a deal with Anne. He says, if you get dressed like the guys and look like the guys, you could be part of the crew. She's okay with this because Dad used to cross-dress her as a boy apprentice back home in Ireland to hide her from his wife. He gets it. It's a man's world. But look, look at the results here. Let's just see the two together. You can't have a female in the pirate court and the captain's quarters without somebody getting pregnant. And that's exactly what happened. So you can't have a pregnant pirate dude on the crew, now can you? He's going to figure out that she's a girl. So he drops her off in Cuba before she starts to show off her pregnancy and says, has the baby here? These are friends of mine. They'll help you. Come back later. We'll figure it out. So she goes and has that baby, but returns without one. We have no idea what happened to the child, by the way. None of our research has ever discovered it. She also comes back dressed like a girl. This makes Jack pretty angry. To make him even more angry, she's going to go flirting with the pirate crew he just captured. Guy number three. You're down below deck. So she's down there flirting, and the guy she chooses to flirt with turns out to be a female, dressed like a guy, to be part of the crew the Calico Jack captured. So now we have two females trying to be pirates dressed like males. Her name is Mary Reed. She went by Mark Reed to become a pirate. Now, Anne and Mary became lovers, for sure, or, or lo friends for sure, but, you know, lovers maybe. I mean, we don't really know because of the time frame. But the British find out where they are. So they send a whole fleet of ships to come take down one pirate. 
and in Mary, rumor is there was only two pirates not drunk enough to come up and fight with their one bullet gun. But they don't know how to use the cannon yet. Obviously, two ladies with one bullet guns can't take on a whole fleet of Navy ships. They get arrested by the British, and as they're being arrested, Anne looks at her captain and bow, tells the captain, she says, Sorry to see you here, but if you would have fought like a man, you would be hanged like a dog. So we're dogs with the velocity, guys, just so you know. The judge wants to see the two quote-unquote men that fought back quietly on their own. He's already trying on Calico Jack, and the drunk pirates that wouldn't fight, so they're dead and gone. The two ladies go in front of the judge and reveal their gender, hoping to save themselves, and the judge doesn't give a damn that they're girls, that they're female. He's still gonna hang them because they're still pirates. So they scream out, we plead our bellies, meaning they're claiming to be pregnant because it's illegal to hang a pregnant woman in 1720. So, I told you, now this is coincidence, Madeline. So, he delays the hanging, sends them both back to jail. Dad is still up here in South Carolina with all of his Irish money, and he bails out Anne, brings her home. She remarries. That's husband number two, but guy number four, because we're going to count Mary Reed. We don't really know for sure. She has four kids, dies at the age of 82. Very abrupt ending, because we don't really know anything for certain after her pirate career. My Mary Reed dies five months later in that Jamaican jail from whatever pirates ride home in the Jamaican jail. Use your imagination on that. Let's look at the fever. Let's call it scurvy. Why the hell not? Yeah. So. Um, here's about a left out. I'm not going to control this environment like I did with the Pinky Mace clip. You can ask whatever the hell you want to. I'm just going to give you a few things that I left out on purpose so you know what you're after. Um, I did leave out the names of the parents. That's the father and the mistress. You can ask about them. The city where Anne grew up in Ireland. Now, that's a very interesting one. Um, we have only gotten that one a few times because it's a relatively new question. The name of Calico Jack's ship that she joined. And the color of Anne Bonnie's hair. Everything else you can ask. Fair game. I don't care how you ask it. Uh, you don't always need to be with special at this location either. Just a prominent English woman that we discussed earlier. Kick Anne in the shins if you have to. Get some answers out of her. Um, EMF readers. Uh, I'm more excited about the back half of the EMF readers because the front half is we have two electrical poles and we have the parking meters on the other side. So anything you get on this back half, 2.5 is exciting at this location. Um, I think one of the highest readings we've got out of here is like a 12. And uh, this is just a few months ago. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. This is not the Pinky Mason site for sure, but it's all about the communication devices, and the biggest orb I've ever caught with your device, Mike, has been at this location. Uh -huh. 14 years, this is where I caught it. Um, so it was actually up there near that wall. So we'll, I'll do one or two round robins with this location, and we'll see what we got going on. Anything being spelled out for us, Julian? Not yet. Because you're going banana nuts over there again. It is, but <laughs> Banana nuts. So Allie, this wall behind me is not real time. It's covered in it's going to look like a whole bunch of army men lined up for you. It doesn't really work out with that camera. So, uh, yeah, I'm touching points. Stay away from me. We've got five cars in there. So you guys get the point. I'm touching points. Are you going to use it in there? Are you listening to me? I'll listen to you. I'll listen to you. I think it's going to be a little cooler. Over there, I heard Jesse's mom, too. Jesse's mom? Yeah. Got it going on? Just Jesse's mom, not the rest of her. That was Steve's mom. Oh, it was Jesse's mom. Stacy's mom doesn't know.
No, well, I don't know. This is a lot less scary than last time. Yeah. What do you got? Poem? Where? English oh. poem. Ooh, cool. Don't forget. That was scary, kind of. Much. I'm doing good. Have you gotten anything out of there? You like I don't, it? I don't know. It's small, isn't it? Yeah, I I'm not even really sure. That was my biggest for. complaint when I, because I give this company a lot of feedback because uh -huh. I use a lot of their gear, and I told them I was like, it's just small. Like a lot of times, if I'm doing an investigation, I set that guy up in the corner, mm -hmm. and I walk away from it and watch it later. Kind of yeah. like what we're doing now. Yeah, well, we'll see what we get. What do you two got? Nothing yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sarah, any numbers at all? That's natural from the earth, so up to 1.1. So, James, what about yours? Anything? No. Nothing? Yeah, a whole lot of nothing. It just seemed to quiet down really fast, didn't it? We were getting a lot of stuff at the beginning. Joanne, did you have anything spelled out for us? I'm sorry. No, nothing now, so there's any nuts earlier. <laughs> and Jack, did you get anything? Yeah. Not even your own name? It's going to show up at this yeah. location quite a bit. Calico? Because that's going to be your new nickname when you go home. Calico. Something comes through there. As soon as you said that, I got you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, was. absolutely. Jason, did hmm. you get anything that wasn't ironic towards the conversation no. you had? Nothing? All right. I'm going to call this one a wrap. This one is usually a, a kind of like a big roll of the dice. We don't know if she's going to be here at the same time we are. Let's... Good. It's too cold. Yeah, I can't feel it. <laughs> no, no. It's not going to be here to me. But I... No, this is awesome. This thing is like a voice recorder, like the one you just got for Christmas, but it's got big microphones on it, so she's going to hear everything. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. 
out if you hear them so Jason and Jack definitely shout things out we got to keep uh, Carly on mute unfortunately um, so here's how this goes the reason why we stopped here um, is simply because the murder actually occurred two blocks from here and I've already told you I have limitations this is as close as I can take y'all the other reason I chose this specific corner is because the woman that was murdered is buried in that cemetery so I'm hoping that we have kind of like a triangular effect by being at this location and we have got a few extra voices that have come through that weren't my group so let's get into this. November 1st of 1933, a woman drops to the ground and starts screaming in pain. A man hit me, and I'm about to die. That's basically all she says. She's on the ground, somebody driving by, and this picture of a 1933 badass car, by the way, stops, helps her out, and helps her into, her, into their car. They take her down to uh, St. Rupert's Hospital, which is where MUSC sits now. So a couple of miles from here, which means whoever hurt her, that will autopsy room and they find a mark underneath her right arm and then a bullet hole inside of her rib cage. When it crossed through her rib cage, it stopped her heart and she died of internal bleeding. Very sad story, correct, right? The woman's name is Mary Ravenel. If you came over here from Mount Pleasant, you came over the giant bridge. That is the Ravenel Bridge. This is a very prominent name here in Charleston. So her jewelry was still intact, uh, so she was not robbed. There was no gunshot residue on her body or clothing. So this was not a close range type of shots, nor was it an accident from a gun she may have had on her own. What questions do we want to ask so that we can get answers out of this? What does it mean? Is she the mother of the daughter that was with Edgar Allen No, this probably, she's married into the family, so this is probably, if anything, a great aunt. At this time frame, if we're going to look at it that way, it's a good question. It's okay to ask yes no questions at this point. I will tell you that one of the, the part of the phrase that she did explain was a man hit me. Um, she did not call them out by name. Um, I will tell you just a few nights ago when we were doing this, somebody listening to a spear box said, it was a black man, and came out of nowhere. They weren't even paying attention. He just said it. So the next night, we did the imagery test at the next location, which is right here. And the image that came through was of a black man basically standing in a jail cell very interesting point. Again, this is what inspires me to continue looking into things like, what other questions would you ask? James, you got anything over there? No. I'm talking about your mind. Like, what, what kind of questions would you ask? No. Nothing? No. Anybody else have any questions you would think? Like, do we know the person? Was she related to a specific person? Well, I was shocked. Why? Okay. <laughs> but she said oh. hit, but she was actually shot. Oh. So they did find that bullet hole. Oh, that's right. No, just the scrape underneath her right arm. So in that shell, it was like almost like she went like this, like she saw it coming. Because when she went like this, it scraped her arm and it went into her ribcage this way. Yeah, this is a tough one. I figured you guys to obviously locations to see how I come up with questions. I thought this would be like a fun exercise in the things that I bring here. Like what would you want? That I don't know. I want to say it was like mid-afternoon. Someone said where? Someone said where? No, I'm gonna do that. I can hear everything. Uh, two blocks up. So it was, was actually within her house? No, she was just walking. She was just. Where was she walking? Don't know. 
Why was she lying? Don't know that either. This is why we ask questions. To murder man? That's why it's a murder mystery. <laughs> Did we know the man? I, again, I don't know. I, I would think if she knew them, she would have called him out by name. And that's just my guesstimate based on human behavior. We got arrested in 1939? 33. 33. Yeah, I like it. She was she on her way home? Don't think so, because one of the places that she, because I believe she had two very specific places, one of them being pretty far inland, like in Anaheim area, I believe. And then uh, she did run a lot of clubs around town as well. Any country club, um, she was in charge of another poetry club here in Charleston. Um, and she actually hosted Robert Frost to come here to town to watch Robert Frost. So she was pretty prominent lady. Was she a job? She's like looking directly at me, like, I want to know this stuff. Like, I'm really <laughs> scared. <laughs> All right. Anybody else want to give a crazy listen to this for about a minute or so before we go do the crazy one? Okay. Well, that's the next one. Another night, I got a, you need to help, I fell down, like very specific, um, and then I've had some whispering, and I couldn't make out the whispering, so, very interesting. Yeah, I going for about a minute or so. Oh, it's still out. Okay. 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 And a lot of people, when they put these, these headphones on, they're like, why don't we hear one of these? Like, it is crystal um, this is one thing that I actually cover from start to finish when I go back to the office and I'm listening to this. I do listen to it minute by minute and I'm taking notes if I hear anything. Um, and if I hear a weird sound, you'll hear me like, oh, that was somebody hit the clock, you know, or something along those lines. So, so that way I'm not counting it as like what's a paranormal. Were there silence games? Yeah. Well, I recognize that. Yes. Because they were. No, but I mean, I'm just saying that. But it does. Right. Every time that thing goes off, it makes a very specific game. Which obviously I know the tone for working with it for so long. And you can probably hear the conversation down the street. So we do have people walking by. Oh! Jeez! Like that's that that somebody's car. Oh. Okay. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and stop this so we can go. Wheels. We're in close and close. We've got about eight minutes on here. So hopefully we caught something with it. Hopefully. Uh, can somebody hit the button? It's your car? Yeah. I gotta see what's on the screen. Yeah. That's gonna go over to you, Charlie. Thank you for that. With yours, I'm gonna give you a blindfold. It's I don't want it back. Okay. You keep your own eyeballs. Yeah, you can buy disposable blindfolds in bulk, in case anybody was wondering, from Amazon. So You can buy anything with it. Yeah. This is kind of like an origami project. If you can figure it out while we're gone, kudos to you. Um, but otherwise, I'll help you when we get back. So what's going to happen is I'm going to take these other folks over to that monument, and I'm going to give them the history of what we're doing here. And you guys aren't going to know anything. So just sit here and become best friends for a few minutes. And uh, we'll be back in like five minutes. I'll give you a few pointers. By the way, don't put the gear on while we're away. No, I'm when I'm I'm holding women on a kind of park bench in the middle of the night that never looks good. So, especially when I walk away. And Blake's looking at me like, what the hell is happening right now? He's like, I'm out. Image. Um, image. I got image. That's actually a good one. That's a good one. Oh, what's your name? And there's someone. Oh. 
just so you have that idea. Right. If you're talking too loud, he's going to tap you on the shoulder. We have neighbors. I try not to piss them off. Okay, You're not going to be able to hear us. You will be telling me everything you hear out of there, whether it's yes, no, whatever it might be. If it's a weird sound, tell me what the sound is. You're not going to hear me. What this should look like is a conversation. With your end, you're going to basically tell us what you see. If it's two people on a bench with a tree in the back, keep it simple because he can't hear you and you'll be talking over each other. I usually focus on him. If he's quiet, I may ask you probing questions about the image that you see. It'll stay up there for 10 to 15 seconds, maybe. You might get one image, you might get a dozen. I don't know. We've had a few nights where we've had zero. So keep that in mind. I will also tell you that the person that I, all, I just told you guys about is pretty pissed off at me. He gave us some pretty nasty answers here last night. He doesn't like me poking around. It's also in the month of December. Oh I want you to have to think about what I told you in that piece mm -hmm. of about the month of December. So again, we're going to see how this goes. Yes, ma'am. We were talking a bunch ago right when you walked away. Um, do you know the date that she died? Yeah, over there. November 1st. Okay. Which is the exact date of when I started going over there. So, I started in November 3rd. November 1st. Why did you guys hear something? Yeah. When we were over there, I heard like 1013 back to back. Mm -hmm. I get it. So let's focus. Well, you guys don't know what you're focusing on at this point. Um, with yours, it's not going to be 3D in your face, just so you know, Carly. Uh, this is actually going to just be like a floating picture in front of smoke. Like I put smoke in the background just so you guys didn't fall asleep in there. Um, there's a focus right here in case it's blurry, so you just turn that dial right there. So have you ever used virtual reality before? Yes. Yeah. So yes, as soon as you get set up and oh, you start really? going, I'm going to start timing it. All this sets up, so it's 11.01 everybody. I do time this just to make sure we're not screwing anything up. I'm not taking pictures of you and waiting for it to line up. Maybe I'm taking a selfie for all you know. Taking a video right now. We're live. We're following. Take that time where it's going to start. Okay, see how the smoke is in there? You'll see a 2D picture floating in front of it. There you go. All right, Jason, can you hear me? What color is the blue banana? You guys right. didn't start? Good. He's good. That's the thing we don't know. Hands on his face. What does the man look like? It is a white man with dark hair and a tattoo on his shoulder. Okay. The tattoo is definitely not our guy. Does he have a mustache? I can't see his hands or legs. Like okay. Okay. So we got at least one he image going so far. I know he has a beard. He has a beard. I was looking for a very distinctive mustache. Our gentleman that I told you guys about has like a of Rodney Williams. Has like a caterpillar mustache, like very thick and furry. That's the kind of person he was. All right, Henry, if you're here, I need you to tell us something about your occupation. We're not doing the angry bit like we did last night. We're going to get down to the nitty gritty. I need you to tell me something about your job, please. Keep an eye on that word list. Where are we at with that? Okay. Henry, are you here alone? That's a yes, no question. Yankees fan. Henry, I need you to push through. Whoever's here needs to stay, take a step backwards and let Henry speak. Right. Henry, we've asked if you brought anybody here and tell, tell us something about your occupation. What did you do for a living? As a writer myself, I have been reading your work more. Henry. I really thought he was going to be giving us quite a bit out of this. Jack, are you hearing anything out of yours? No. Henry, are you mad from yesterday? Mm -hmm. The clouds went dark. The clouds went dark. Move your head around. Can you come back? Yes. 500 people. 500? They're like a dark gray. They're still there. Yeah. My phone. So if my wife is sending you dirty pictures, you need to let us know. <laughs> but no, I mean, like, literally, the clouds are like gray. Like dark. It's weird. It's like storm clouds. Right? We're not supposed to do that. It's supposed to hold on like the Cuban cigar smoke. <laughs> Henry, Fresh get back to you, sir. We're using the green box. We're using all of the boxes I have in my bag. You can use any of them. I'm looking to go after your occupation. I want to learn more about your writing. Let's go into that. Don't need to talk anything sad about your son. 
or about your death itself. Let's get into something happy about your life, sir. Let's, let's get into your writing. Can you tell us what you wrote about? Very simple, one syllable word. That'll verify that you're here. Wow, he's silent. Mm -hmm. Unless you get more than war up there. Okay. You got northern. If you get southern, you definitely have civil war. Yeah. Not a dead sacrifice, it's a living. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh my god, I'm gonna I don't know, we're gonna find out. Fight for democracy. Oh my Henry, thank you for all of that. Let's get back to your writing. Ask for forgiveness. I'm sorry for yesterday. <laughs> if we poked the bear a little too hard, my apologies. That's why we're going after your writing today. Can you tell us what war you actually wrote about? What war did you serve in, sir? Ohio State fans. What? <laughs> he did get the word northern. I don't know where he fought. I, I heard out of, so probably like out of state. <laughs> Henry, can you tell us which war you served in? It's a Friday night, Henry. I know there's going to be loud people walking by. I know you don't like the crowds, but back on you. We're talking about your writing and your service to the country. Which war did you serve in? Sing a slang song tonight. Six hundred years. Oh my God! It wasn't that long ago. Henry. He said, see, it's time to bring in the new year. year. Next station, country. Is there anything you want to say to us? It's all about grace. I, I, just about <laughs> I just got the same thing. I just got the same thing. Any other images coming through? Well, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> Not my fault. Henry. Surrender. Oh, something just came up. Oh, I see there. Thanks, Henry. Can you uh, tarot cards. Really? What card? Uh, there's one with a person in a red dress. Like... What time period? It looks, honestly, it's like Vikings. It looks like a helmet. Wow. Okay. And some swords in the room. Oh, there is swords in the suit. Tarot. I'll have to see it. Henry, you're pretty quiet. Can you tell us, uh, we only got about three minutes left. Henry, let's get back to your writing. Can you tell us what kind of writing you did? Did you write literature? Did you write plays? Did you write poetry? Let's tell us what you wrote about. Hi guys. A man with a handlebar behind A man with a handlebar behind It's not bald. Well, it's not like bald, bald, it's just bald on top. It was a rounded head. Definitely not him. I will tell you, do you guys remember the person I told you who lent him his cottage? Also had a mustache and a little bald on top. I'll have to look at it to compare. You guys will see these images before we break part two, and they'll be in your desk. Henry, you've been very... Michael. Oh my. Well, here's the thing. That church over there is St. Michael. Were you referring to the church or to somebody? Hunter. Or somebody in our group? Shot. Hunter. Could this be the lady that got shot? It could be. This is actually where I got the inspiration from. Was through this event. Trying to get in touch with Henry and Mary. I actually have a picture of a woman that looks just like Mary that came through on the big dock. Can you tell us your first name if you're not Henry? 
felt like we had Henry tonight, but if somebody else is here, he could tell us what your name is. So we know how to address you. Living without this. You're looking for a name. Can you give us your name? The enemy has said of you. Henry, I need you to push forward from whoever else is trying to come through. And we're going to say goodnight. Can you say goodnight back to Your us? sins. I got a picture of a bed. A bed? Yeah. Anything in the bed? Two pillows on the bed. It's made up. Time period? Uh, looks semi-modern. Okay. Black and white or colored? There were no seat belts. It's more of a sepia color looking part up. Okay. Maybe early 1900s? Maybe. Is it a BLU again? No. So I don't have glasses. Hell you do. Carter took it in the hospital. we're going to say goodnight. Can you say I don't want to be cold. Mike, that's you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me either. Can you say goodnight back to us? We're going to be respectful. Can you say goodnight, Henry? Do you want to say anything back before we close it down? There's something you should know about me. Okay, what is it? Make it quick, we're out of time. The ones that love you, real people. Thank you, Henry. You gave us some pretty decent answers tonight. You said enemy earlier, and we have it on the word list right here. Okay, Allie, let's knock him out. Allie, do that thing off your face. Number one. You had presidency. You're more on the enemy. No, she had presidency. You guys know where you're at? Walking through the park. Named after a resort. Mm -hmm. And I bend over there. Picture. What's up? We're done. Oh. That's it. So don't get up either one of you. I'm going to take my phone back. Probably. Still working over here. So, we're going to take all these photos. Don't get up either one of you. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit more anxious or something for us. Technically, like that. Yeah. Alright, let's take a look at these photographs. You know, they're going to have to huddle around me because they don't really get much bigger. So, this is the man that she said that we're, you know, obviously hands over their face. So, yeah. It gets pretty detailed. Um, and this is made by... Oh, that's a tarot card. Wow. You know, that's a tarot. Of course, it's upside down for me. Um, the cool thing, guys, is when I started going through this, that does not look like... That's a full beard. Holy cow! And that's a beard. Um, I actually put this through Google Lens to see if it matches up with anything, especially with whoever we're discussing you know, at that point in time. We have had Google Lens come through for us. So this could have been 1930, and it's So uh, this could be relevant to you know, what you were talking about, like this Mary coming through. It's a possibility. So we'll have to see what else comes through. Um, so Jason, at the top where your volume is, there's a button next to it. We'll slide it in the opposite direction so we stop the recording. Oh, this isn't the recording. Zach, you're going to do the same thing. That way it stops, so that way we know the very last 10 to 12 minutes was from this method. Um, so we're not going to hear what you heard, but at least we'll have Jack recording at the last 12 minutes. Um, we actually had a few decent things come through. Um, so I would call this like partially successful. So until I actually go through and see what else matched up on this time frame, you know, I would say that this was partially.